Sunday school, where where would we be without mom? Uh, shudder to think where we'd be without mom. So thankful for moms. Uh, good to see you this morning. Let's stand together as we begin. Turn in your hymn books to hymn number 16. Let's sing together, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord, hymn number 16.
let's make our way back to our seats, please. Once you get there, you may be seated. Once you get to your seat. And once you're uh, at your seat and seated in the wood, get your bulletin out. And we'll uh, highlight just a few of the events that are coming up uh, here at the church. And uh, once again, so good to see you. If you're here this morning and you forgot it was Mother's Day, you were just reminded this morning, um, I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully that works out for you. Uh, let's get our bulletins out and we'll highlight what's coming up at the church. Don't forget, teenagers, uh, in just two weeks you have your uh, Bible quiz meet this Saturday, May 22nd. Uh, that takes place at 11 o'clock. So teenagers, be sure and be studying for that. Uh, are we uh, going to plan another practice? Uh, Wednesday? Okay, so Wednesday, teenagers, you'll have another practice this Wednesday, uh, another study session, so keep that in mind. Uh, and then also, Memorial Day picnic is Saturday, uh, Sunday, May 30th, uh, right here on the church grounds, and we'll have our morning service followed by our picnic, and then we'll have an afternoon service, and I would encourage you to be a part of uh, those services, be a patriotic service as we uh, remember and recognize those who have uh, given of their lives so that we might worship freely, and that's just one of the freedoms that we have, and we want to uh, remember them, uh, and uh, so we'll have a patriotic service that Sunday morning. I encourage you to be here for that. There is a sign-up sheet on this table over here for a couple of things. First of all, if you can help by bringing some, uh, uh, some food, check that sign-up sheet out. Be sure to sign up to bring something. Uh, and then also, if you have not entered in the Cornhole Tournament, uh, I would encourage you to do so. We've got some, uh, some young guys down here who uh, they are pretty confident they won it last year, and they think it's in the bag this year. And uh, so, so we need some people to step up and dethrone these young whippersnappers, <laughs> young whippersnappers. And so they won it last year, and they're looking to repeat. That shall not happen, we hope. So, uh, sign up for it. It'll be a great time of fellowship, and we'll enjoy some good food together. Uh, and uh, celebrate uh, our Savior, celebrate the great country that we live in. And then men, don't forget our men's prayer breakfast, uh, Saturday, May 29th. Look forward to that time of fellowship and uh, that time of prayer and looking into the Word of God. And then uh, I know we're a little ways out, Vacation Bible School at the end of June, and then Teen Camp in the middle of July. So be sure uh, and be praying about those. Uh, and uh, Vacation Bible School will lead uh, many, many of you to help out. Uh, and be a part of that and, and helping with it, teaching and running games and all that good stuff. And then for teen camp, teenagers, I hope you'll consider uh, uh, joining us for camp uh, this coming July for that. I want to take just a moment also and thank uh, my wife and the ladies who put on the luncheon yesterday. Uh, great, uh, great job. I heard great things. I tasted great things. Uh, and so thank you so much for, for all that you did for that uh, luncheon yesterday. And it was a tremendous success uh, from what I have been told. So thank you for putting it on. And then also thank you, ladies, for being here uh, for that as well. We want to take just a moment and recognize our mothers today. So I'm going to ask all of our moms, if you would, to please stand for just a moment. And we want to take a minute and recognize you. And uh, look at all these moms. There's a, there's a lot of love in this room. A lot of love for moms this year. Let's uh, give our moms a round of applause. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to change things up. Would you go get those gifts out of my office, Ingrid? And we'll uh, give those out now. Ladies, can you stand for just a moment? Can we do that? Okay, good. Uh, it just depends on how quickly my, my wife runs here. So uh, we've got a, just a gift for each one of you. And uh, just to say thank you. Uh, for all that you do, for your families, for the ministry. Uh, a mom's job is never done. Dads, we've got it easy. Moms, they, they do everything. And, uh, and uh, we, uh, we thank you so much uh, for all that you do uh, for us. Um, we're, we're working on it here. We're going to get these for you. So uh, just a moment here. Can we, should we sing a song? No, we won't sing a song. No, we'll be okay. They're in my office. There's only so far it could be. So are, they, are we coming? There they are. They're coming. So, men, if you could help uh, pass those down to each one of these ladies who have stood long enough, and they have earned their gift today. And so, ladies, uh, this is just a small token of our appreciation for all that you do. We ask one thing. 
stay out of the wrapping. It makes too much noise during the service, okay? So let's, let's refrain from that. Uh, and uh, let's refrain from putting it on during the service as well. I think some lotion. And uh, we don't want too many good smells in here, I guess. It would be overpowering. So uh, thank you, ladies, so much. Once you receive your gift, you may be seated. And let's once again give our moms a good round of applause. Uh, one more time. <laughs> Uh, Ingrid, if you would, to come on up here. We, we missed it some. Okay, good. Uh, don't forget the moms in the nursery and the toddler church as well. We don't want to forget them. And uh, Ingrid, if you would uh, join me to, right up here. If you don't, don't trip. It's, it's not like it's being live streamed to be on, around the world. You know? That's okay. Uh, we've got, uh, we want to recognize some special moms that are in attendance today. And so we've got a special gift uh, for moms who win in these different categories, and we have a coffee mug. Is this, can they drink out of this? As long as you take the flower out first, okay? Uh, so we've got uh, these uh, for you uh, here, and so if you can hold the first one. And so here's what we want to do. We want to recognize several moms in different categories. Uh, let's do, we'll, we'll ease into it slowly, because we don't want to offend the moms here. Let's go the mom that has traveled the farthest to be here today. The mom that has traveled the farthest to be here today. Um, anybody from Greenland? Okay, a couple. Okay, good. Uh, let's, let's go a little bit further. How about, uh, should we go 20 miles away? Anybody further than 20 miles away? Okay, we've got, we've got two. All right, 30 miles. All right, how many, how many miles right here? 200-something. 200-something, all right. Blowing everybody out of the water today. Uh, 200 miles, so this first prize goes to hers. Let's give, let's give Sandy's daughter a good round of applause. 200 miles to be with mom on Mother's Day. Tremendous, so thank you. Uh, Ingrid, you're going to get your steps in here today, so good. All right, next, and let's, uh, let's try this here. Let's go with the oldest mother present. The oldest mother present. I know I'm in trouble. We'll start at 29. <laughs> Every lady's hand goes up 29. Okay, let's go uh, at 29. Um, how old are you? No, we'll go. <laughs> Anybody over 40? So, hey, you're, you're doing it for a prize, okay? It's okay. Uh, let's take uh, 50. And in, in, in age, it doesn't matter. It's how you feel, okay? It's, it's how you feel. 60. All right, we've got a few. Hey, proudly, proudly. 70. All right, oh, we're, we're dwindling down. 75. And there's two. Three. Oh, three. Oh, sorry. 76. Well, four. There's four. I'm sorry. Proudly raise it up. 78. Oh, we've eliminated a couple. All right, we've got, is that just two? Am I seeing this, am I seeing this right? Let's try it. 80. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's 80. 79. She got it. Marie Rowley got it. Let's give Marie a good one. <laughs> See, I would have got there eventually. We have a, a baby that is younger than eight months. All right, so uh, Tammy gets Tammy gets one, the newest baby. Uh, newest mother present. Let's give her a round of applause. I skipped one. I'm sorry. Let's do this. The youngest mother present. The youngest mother present. Okay. 
Uh, so let's see, do we have 29? Anybody younger than 29? Mom younger than 29? Oh my. Oh my. Uh, 30? Mother that's 30? Going once, going twice. 31? A mother that's 31? 32? 33? Gibson, put your hand down and you'll get one. <laughs> Don't even try to get a prize here. 34. We've got two that are 34. Uh, should we go, should we get more specific or give them both a prize? Give them both a prize. Good call, Brian. Good call. <laughs> I like that. We don't want to have any fighting in church, so good call. Good call. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's give these two ladies a good round of applause. And Tammy, if you'd like to re-gift one of those, that's perfectly fine as well. All right. Oh, birthday! Well, happy birthday! Is it today? Yeah. Well, should we? Happy birthday! Let's sing happy birthday, should we? Oh, look at that! Happy birthday! Job, and we 
so appreciate appreciate all of you. And uh, ladies, if you did not receive a gift, you can meet them in the parking lot afterwards. I guess. I don't, I don't know. So, all right. Uh, let's uh, let's stand together again. Anger, did we cover everything? Well, I think we covered all that. Good. All right. Let's stand together. We'll sing a, a song. Uh, let's sing together number one hundred forty-eight. 148, great is thy faithfulness, standing together as we sing, great is thy faithfulness. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, 
And the people multiplied and waxed very mighty. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the reading of your word this morning. We're thankful for Mother's Day. We're thankful for a day in which we set aside as a nation to uh, recognize our moms and, uh, and to show our moms our love. God, I pray that today you would strengthen our moms, that you would uh, encourage them in the fight that they are in to raise their young people, to raise their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. God, what a, what a tremendous responsibility to raise young people. God, I pray that you would bless today. God, bless the preaching of your word to follow in just a few moments. God, speak to our hearts today. Move mightily in our midst. And God, it is my prayer that if there is one here that does not know you as your Savior, that today they would come to trust you. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing for just a couple more minutes here. Let's turn in our hymn books. To hymn number 265. Hymn 265. We're going to sing together, Draw Me Nearer. And as we sing, our children can be dismissed to junior church at this time. Number 265. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice. God gave you a brain, use it. 
This one, ask a stupid question. Get a stupid, get a stupid answer. Oh, we got a professional here. <laughs> get a stupid answer. That's not good. Uh, or this one. I'm not asking. I'm telling you. Oh, that was scary. When you have kids, I hope they're just like you. Oh. Don't use that tone of voice with me. My wife says this, this and, and this is when we all run. Stop crying or I'll give you something to really cry about. Or you better wipe that look off your face before I do it myself. Not good. So those are just some sayings, scary sayings, uh, that mothers have. We're in Exodus chapter number 2. I want you to look at Exodus chapters 1 and 2. In chapter number 1, we see the, uh, the edict that is given by Pharaoh to slaughter the male children of the Israelites. In fact, you read in chapter number 1 and verse number 22, the uh, Bible says, And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. And I want you to notice as we dive into chapter number 2, and look with me at verse number 1, it says, And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And so Moses, uh, uh, we know that this is Moses that is being talked about here. And, and Moses is born to this, this lady, Jochebed, and, uh, and uh, they, uh, Amram and Jochebed, they decide to, uh, to keep Moses, to hide Moses, and defy the uh, order of Pharaoh, defy the laws of Pharaoh, and keep their son alive. We see here as we continue to read, I want you to notice as we look at Moses' mom this morning, I want you to notice just a couple of characteristics of her motherhood, or we could say a couple of characteristics of a godly mother. A godly mother. I want you to notice as we look into this back in verse number one, as we consider what makes a godly mother. Verse number one, I want you to notice here, it says, And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi, and the woman conceived. I'm not going to park here long, but I just want to just want to share this with you. God's plan for man and woman, or a man and a woman, is to be married. God's got a specific way in which he wants things done. He wants that man, that woman to be married, and then we find that God's pattern, God's plan after marriage is when child uh, uh, birth and child rearing is to occur. That's God's plan. And God had instituted uh, uh, and showed us that plan in the Garden of Eden when he created man and woman, male and female, created he them. Marriage is ordained by God and is Planned by God. And following marriage is when children appear. There are, as we know, there are times, uh, uh, and we see it in our, our world today, when, uh, when the plan gets out of whack and, and it gets out of place. And that does happen, and mistakes are made, I understand that. But just know, God's plan is one man, one woman, uh, one lifetime. And after marriage is when uh, children are to come. That's God's plan. And you may be here this morning and maybe you would say, man, I've, uh, I haven't really followed God's plan. And, and this isn't what our message is, is entirely about today, but I just want to be an encouragement to you. Uh, that may, You may not have followed God's plan and, and maybe there are some regrets in, uh, uh, in the past. Well, let me tell you something. It's in the past. You can't change it. But you can't change your future. And so you, you purpose and you, and you live for the Lord today. You do what you know uh, is right today. And you, you train your children to maybe not make the same mistakes that you did or the same mistakes that I did and, and train them and teach them uh, the right way to live. Some of us, uh, uh, myself included, we learn from the school of hard knocks. And we didn't do things that, uh, according to God's plan, but you know what? We need to encourage our young people to do things according to God's plan. 
And here we have Moses' parents there married and following marriage there, she conceives and has a son in verse number two. When she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. I want you to notice just three things. We, we see God, God's plan for marriage and God's plan for children. But I want you to notice specific, specifically about Moses' mother today is this. First of all, number one, is that a godly mother chooses life. A godly mother chooses life. In our society today, we have, as a nation, have murdered 65 million babies. And I believe that God's hand of judgment is, is coming because of that. And we would, uh, uh, we would identify ourselves as, as being pro-life, and, and the other side would say that they are, are pro-choice. But isn't it interesting that the pro-choice crowd uh, uh, exclusively choose to kill? There's not much said about the other side about being pro-choice. If it's really a choice, then a mother gets to choose. But I'm here to tell you this morning that a godly mother always chooses life. You see, life is given by God. We, we read in, in Jeremiah uh, that God tells about Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Every life is special. Every life is important. And Moses' mother, when she could have, uh, she had it right there. And when the, it was against the law for her to have a son, but she chose life. And we find even in chapter number one that the midwives, they, they chose to help out in delivering these boys and uh, seeing them live. And, and in Moses' case, uh, uh, his parents kept him hidden for three months. Jochebed chose life for her son. I'm here to tell you this morning that life begins at conception. Every life is important to God. You ask the mom who has lost a child before being able to look into her child's eyes. My wife and I, we have lost several children before they were birthed. And it's a sad, emotional time, and, and you can't tell me that there's no connection there between mom and baby. Uh, life begins at conception. It's not like uh, the rock star Madonna who said there was an alien growing inside of her. That's a real life. Given by Almighty God. And every life is important to God. Life begins at conception. It says, And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. I want to share with you just another thought about, about life. We, we harp on it all the time, and we preach about it, and we, we stand up for a baby's rights and, and the right to life, and, uh, and that's a good thing to do, and we know that life begins at conception, and we're, we're against abortion, and we understand that, but you know what? The living life doesn't stop there. You see, there's a life outside of the womb as well. That a mother and a father commit to raising that young person. And God and Lord willing, they commit to serve, raising that young person in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I'll say this, parenting must be done on purpose. Parenting must be done on purpose. Adults, think back. Think back when you were a teenager. Did you know everything? We look back and we say, what in the world? But I'm telling you this, these young people down here, they think they know it all. Mom doesn't know she's talking to Will. Dad just doesn't know what we're going through as uh, teenagers today. He's so old. They think they know everything. But adults, if you were to go back and say, man, but man, knowing what I know now, I would have done things different as I was growing up. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> but parents... That's why these teenagers and these young people that are here and in the junior church and the nursery, we've got a parent on purpose. We've got a parent on purpose. We've got to uh, uh, have a plan for raising our children. 
I'll give you a couple of examples. My wife and I, we didn't wake up this morning and say, hey, huh, am I going to church today? Now, as a pastor, that'd be a little strange. Okay? As a pastor that showed up at church, we've got a problem. My kids didn't have to wake up today and say, I wonder what we're doing on Sunday. Uh, I wonder what we're doing. No, I'm parenting on purpose. And so my children know that when the church doors are open, they're going to be there. Parenting on purpose uh, uh, causes you to protect what God has so graciously given to you. Protecting your children's minds. What they see. Who they hang out with. Where do they go? Say, wait a minute, that's pretty controlling. No, that, that's called parenting. That's right. It's parenting. Parenting on purpose. Having a plan. And, uh, and uh, you look at uh, Jacob and Amram, uh, Amram here. They, they had to parent on purpose. Man, they, uh, they, they were risking their lives by raising this young man, uh, this little child, Moses. Parents on purpose. Have a plan and uh, have a purpose. Think about this. There's, from time to time, my, uh, my young people, my children, they uh, will play in the street. We teach our kids from an early age, and I'm sure that you did as well, not to run in the street. We teach them to look both ways before you cross the road. I remember we in California, we lived on a bit of a busier street. And the cars would, uh, people would come down there and they're just flying past our house. And there were times when, uh, when my kids, and they knew better, where they would, uh, they would look and say, oh, look at that. And they would go run towards the street. And me being a laid back parent and not parenting on purpose, I said, let's just see what happens. Let them make their own mistakes. You know what happens when a kid uh, runs out into the street? They get tired. Run over. <laughs> Be hit by a car. You say, man, parenting on purpose, that's me. No, that's, that's safety, that's protection. I, I, if my child starts to run towards the street, I will run after them, grab them, and pull them back. Not because I hate them and want what's bad for them, but because I love them. I want to see them safe. And so parents, we, we talk about it a lot, life beginning at conception, and we should, and every life is valuable for the Lord. But, but man, as our young people, as they live their lives, we've got a, a, a parent on purpose. You've got to have some boundaries. You've got to have some safety nets. You've got to have some precautions as you raise your young people. Parents on purpose. Say this, you might be here this morning and say, man, I... I haven't really been parenting on purpose. I just kind of let my kids do what they want. Well, it's never too late to start. And, and young people, let me tell you this. Uh, be thankful for a mom. Be thankful for a dad that parent on purpose. That loves you enough to spend time teaching and, and training you and parent on purpose. Be thankful for that. Godly mother chooses life not just to give to birth, but also to raise a young person. Look with me at verse number three as we continue. The Bible tells us, and, and when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an, an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what, what would be done to him. Look at verse number 10. <coughs> and the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. A godly mother not only chooses life, and not only chooses to raise her children, but a godly mother sacrifices for her children. Your moms, you might be sitting here saying amen to that. Sacrifice my sleep. Sacrifice my energy, my time, my everything. I sacrifice everything. And moms do. A mom's job is, is never done. Mom is always there. The Bible tells us about Moses' parents in the book of Hebrews. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents. 
because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Moses' parents were not afraid of the king's commandment, was not afraid of, of what the king might do, but rather chose life and chose to raise their young man, uh, their young child for the glory of God. Uh, and I want you to notice this, uh, as they hid him three months, we see in verse number two, and in verse number three, when she could not... And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, the dab of a slime pitch, and put the child therein, laid it in the flag by the river's brink. Uh, you know, a, a godly mother prepares for her child's future. A godly mother uh, seeks to have her child growing and learning. She's planning for her child's future. You see, moms, you're not, uh, you're not raising a baby. You're raising a young man. You're raising a young lady. Because a baby's a baby. You're not teaching your teenager to be a baby. They might act like it sometimes. <laughs> You're raising your boys to be young men, or to be men. You're raising your, your girls to be ladies. You've got to have a plan, a plan for your child's future. Teaching them and training them. And, and we notice that her sacrifice is not just a, a planning for Moses' future. It meant she couldn't hide him any longer. Uh, they were probably living in fear that a Pharaoh and his men are, uh, would come in and take the baby and kill him. And so for Moses' sake, she put him in that little basket there and sent him down the river. And his sister, Moses' sister, stood afar off in verse number four to wit what would be done to him. She planned for Moses' future. You see, under Pharaoh's rule, Moses did not have a future. So Moses' mom stepped in and did the best that she could. She was willing to give her life. Look with me at verse number five. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself in the river. And her maidens walked along by the riverside, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the children for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me. I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. You see the sacrifice that Moses' mom makes here for Moses' future. We see the sacrifice. Moses' mom was, was willing to give her life so that her son might live. She lived in fear, not knowing uh, uh, if it, it would be found out that she had a child. Sacrifices that were made. I want you to notice, a godly mother also trains her children. She trains her children. The Bible tells us, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. You know, a lot of people, they think that if I just send my kids to church, it will be good. Hey, if I just send my kids to a Christian school, they'll, uh, hopefully they'll turn out. Or, or we have such low expectations, well, at least they're not in jail. You've got you to train. You've got to, as we said, parent on purpose. Mother trains her children, teaches them, and uh, molds them, and uh, molds their hearts. It is said that a parent's reward, grandchildren are a parent's reward for not killing their children. I don't know how true that is. Grandparents, maybe you can attest to that. But, but I, know th I know this for a fact, and, and I know my in-laws might be watching. But man, when I married my wife, I was, I was it to them. I was their son-in-law, the one and only boy in the family. They loved me. And then I made the mistake that we had children. 
<laughs> they don't care about me anymore. All they care about is the grandchildren. They don't want me to come for a visit. They want the grandchildren to come for a visit. Man, my first Christmas at their house, man, I made out like a bandit. Now my kids make out like bandits. <laughs> it's horrible. You know what? Children are a blessing. Grandchildren are a blessing. But we, gotta, we must train them and nurture that tradition of the Lord. Teach them. I tell, my, I tell my kids this often, and I, I tell our young people this in, in youth group. Said, listen, you don't, when we're talking about marriage, you're not just looking for a good person to marry. You're not just looking for a Christian to marry. But rather, you're looking for somebody that is godly. A godly Christian that desires to live for the Lord. And I tell our young people that. And, and, and how are they going to find somebody who is godly? Well, they've got to be shown an example of godliness by who? Mom and dad. You see, I'm all for, uh, and, and I believe you need to, I'm all for being in Sunday school. And for those of you, Sunday school begins at 945. I'm all for being in church on a Sunday morning. Hey, we start at 1030. Man, I'm all for being in church Sunday night. Hey, service at 6 o'clock tonight. That's great. You need to be here. Hey, I'm all for Wednesday night. We've got service at 6 o'clock. And uh, during the winter months and the fall months, we've got the rock and our children's ministry. Man, I'm all for that. But if you add each week, you add up all that time that we spend in church, you know what it amounts to? About three hours. Mm -hmm. The Sunday school teacher is not training your young person. They're assisting you, mom. They're assisting you, Dad. We only get three hours here. The rest of the week is with you. Let me ask you a question here as we consider this. Who spends the most time with your children? We do. And I, I remember, I remember when I, I was teaching in the school of California, there were kids that would show up at school at 6.30 in the morning. And they wouldn't get picked up until 6 o'clock. Who are they around the most? Teachers. Teachers. Other kids. Almost 12 hours a day. Who's raising that child? Teacher. Teacher. Who's supposed to be raising children? Mom and dad. Mom and dad. That's God's plan. Mom and dad. That's why we said this morning, parent on purpose. A, a godly mother parents on, on purpose. She trains her children uh, in the way they should go. Being that godly example. The Bible tells us, and if you would go with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter number 1. The Apostle Paul here is writing to a young man, a young pastor. In 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse number 5, or I'm sorry, look with me, verse number 2. We see who he is writing to here. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 2. It says, To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Look with me, verse number 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, Paul saying, Timothy, hey, when I think about your faith, when I think about how you've grown, when I think about your relationship with Jesus Christ, look what, look what it says. Which dwelt first in who? In thy grandmother. grandmother. In thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Moms, dads even, are you being that godly example of faith to your children? Here's what I've, I've, I've experienced. People like the product of sending their kids to church, sending their kids to the youth ministry, sending their kids even to a Christian school. They like the product. <clears throat> For their kids. I drove a bus for and a van for nearly for nearly 14 years in California, picking up kids each week, multiple times a week. 
And these kids would come faithfully and parents would never show up. They liked that they were going to church and they made their kids go to church, but they themselves did not. And they hoped that their kids got it. But let me tell you something. You know who kids learn the most from? Mom and dad. They're always watching. Isn't it true? You're a young, you're a young child, a boy or girl. They say something and you're like, where did you hear that? You know where they probably heard it from? dad. That's where they heard from. It's amazing as my, my kids get older, I, I, I watch them and they, they, they mimic me a little bit. They look like me. Phil shakes head. Looks like me. Good example. They, they even begin to sound like me and they, they talk like me and they say things that I say. That's a pretty sobering thought for how I live my life. Moms, it's a sobering thought for how you your life. You might be here this morning and say, Pastor, come on, you're just talking moms and dads and all that. Well, guess what? Someday, someday, young people, you might be a mom, you might be a dad. You say, hey, uh, I, don't, I don't have any kids, or all my kids are grown, and uh, none of them are close to me. Well, hey, you, just, you need to be an example of faithfulness to young people. You be an example of, of someone who loves the Lord, a godly individual. As we look at Moses here, uh, he had a godly mom who, who chose life rather than ending Moses' life uh, right as he was born. She chose to keep him alive. She hid him for three months. And when she could no longer do so, she provided for his future and, and put him in a basket and sent him, sent him down the river away. So that he could have a better life. And you know who finds Moses? Pharaoh's daughter. Pharaoh's daughter finds Moses in the bulrushes. She opens that basket up and do you know what she hears? She hears the baby cry. She has compassion on that baby. She has compassion on that baby and and Moses' sister is watching all of this unfold, and she goes up to Pharaoh's arms and says, Hey, I know somebody who can take care of this baby for you. We don't know how long that Moses stayed with his biological mom before going back to, to Pharaoh's uh, uh, palace. We don't know how long. Some people say it might have been, been two years. Some people say it might, might have been six years that they, he was with his mom and with his dad. <coughs> But I know this, and you know the life of Moses. Moses, as you know, one of the great leaders of Israel. God uses Moses to lead Israel out of the promise or out of Egypt and, and to the promised land. God uh, uh, used Moses to deliver the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel. That just doesn't happen by accident. A relationship with the Lord doesn't happen by accident, but rather, uh, I believe that uh, as, uh, as Moses' parents there had, had the baby Moses for, for just a short time, that they taught him, they trained him uh, about who God is and, and what God has done and about the promises that God had made to the children of Israel. And Moses, I believe, didn't forget that. And God served Moses in a great way. And I think in part because Amram parented on purpose. Mom and dad, guess what? Your children are your friends. They're your children. There comes a time, I believe, when, the, when your children can become your friend. But as they're growing and as you're training them, you've got to be, you're the teacher, you're the coach. You're, you're molding them. You're guarding their hearts. Parent on purpose. And then young people, be thankful for a mom that loves you. Be thankful for a mom that says the dreaded words, the dreaded word, you know what it is? No. Be thankful that there's somebody that will tell you no. 
sign that they love you and they care about you. Moses' mother, she chose life. She sacrificed and was willing to sacrifice her life for her son. And she trained Moses to know God. Parents, you've got a big responsibility. A big responsibility. Who's going to be the next pastors, the next missionaries, the next Sunday school teachers, the next deacons? Who's going to be the next ones to, to, to be the janitor at the church, to teach in junior church? Who's going to be the ones that, that, that take up the slack after we are gone? Well, it's the young people. It's the young people. you got to train and parent on purpose. You go, most churches today, there are many churches today that are like ours. You don't have a lot of young people there. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. But well, one of them, I think, is because we didn't train. We didn't go after the hearts of our young people. And many have left. They've left the faith. They've left the church. And I'm not here to say it's hopeless. I'm saying, hey, we've got a big job to do. We've got to get on our knees. We need to pray for those that, that should know better, those that have been trained in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and those that have walked away. We've got to get on our knees and pray for them and encourage them to come back to the Lord. And it's a big job. God's called us to do it. There's no substitute for mom. Mom, be willing to parent on purpose for the glory of Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this, these brief moments in your word. We're thankful for Mother's Day and a time to celebrate moms. God, I pray that, first of all, today, that for moms and dads today, that God, you would work in, in the hearts of each mom and each dad to parent, and to parent on purpose, to parent with a plan. And that plan is to raise young people for the glory of you. And God, for those of us who maybe uh, uh, aren't involved or aren't parenting really anymore, and maybe we're past that stage in our life, God, help us to continue to be faithful. Help us to continue to pray for, for those that, uh, that maybe have fallen away. God, help us to be an encouragement to, uh, to young families as as they raise their young people for the glory of God. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? Turn in your hymn books to hymn number 387. Hymn 387. As we sing this in just a moment, if God's working in your heart this morning, I encourage you to come, kneel at this altar, get alone with the Lord as we sing together. Number 387, have that on the way, Lord. Sing it out of that first verse. Have I no way? together. 
Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and grace. We thank you for the mothers who are in our presence and those who are listening. Lord, we just pray that your special blessing upon them. We uh, also thank you for your presence in our life, Lord, and we just give you the praise for it all. Lord, I pray that you would be with both the gift and the giver, that your word would go from this place forth and that you would be given all the glory. In Jesus' name do we pray. Amen. Amen. stand together. We'll be dismissed with a word of prayer. I want to ask, uh, and we're excited about Stephen's desire and Courtney's desire to join the church. Excited about that. And just a, just a quick thought. That's parenting on purpose. That's leading your family the right way. Amen. And uh, being a part of the local church where you can serve the Lord. Uh, that's, that's, that's where it starts. And so I'm excited about that. We're excited about Dennis and Gerald Lynn joining our, our church as well. I'm going to ask them if they would to come stand down here. And we want to extend the right hand of fellowship to them. And uh, uh, so we will not embarrass them too much. There's a, there is a duet that must be sung. Uh, <laughs> all members sing it. And so uh, they desire to join our church and they've met with the deacons and we're excited to, to serve the Lord together with you. Uh, and uh, that's that's what we do. We, we come together and we accomplish things for the Lord together. Hey. Uh, and we seek to be a blessing to each other, and uh, they've been a blessing already. They called, uh, uh, Geraldine called the church. We had that church cleanup day, uh, and uh, she called, and she said, hey, um, we're not members, but can we come help clean up? And I said, yes, of course. Let's clean up. Let's do it. And uh, she mopped the whole gym, and he had a chainsaw out, and I mean, raking everywhere, and I uh, just appreciate their, their help on that day. But we look forward to serving the Lord together with you. And we welcome you to our church. And uh, if you uh, uh, all rejoice in uh, Dennis and Geraldine coming and joining our church, would you say amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, we're just here serving more together. And it's a privilege to serve with you. Let me welcome you officially. 
uh, thank you so much and look forward to it. And the following uh, our prayer, if you would, come down the center aisle and we'll we'll shake hands and uh, give them the right hand of fellowship here. Welcome to our ser- to our membership here at Calvary Baptist Church. Uh, and so so excited about it. Look forward to it. All right, let's bow for prayer and then you can come down and, and greet them. I'm going to ask Pastor Barnett, if you would, to close the service in prayer, please.